So for our last video in this chapter, we're going to be talking about perceptual organization. Usually I would get you to raise your hands and tell me which one you see, either the old or the young woman. Um, basically, what you see depends on how you are organizing your perceptual experience. And in this case, it could go one way or the other because this is an ambiguous image. Um, so for example, I automatically see the young woman. Um, so in case you're having a hard time, so as I've said that, I'm suddenly seeing the old woman. Okay, so the young woman, this would be her nose. There's her eyelashes. This is her ear. This is her chin. Okay. Um, and then the old woman, so let me readjust my perception of this. So the old woman, this is actually now her nose. This is her eye. This is her mouth. And this is her chin. So hopefully you can... You know, pause this, play around with trying to see it both ways. Um, however, with other things, we organize things in a more predictable manner. Like I said, this is ambiguous. Usually we're looking at things that are less ambiguous. Um, and we have this tendency um, to organize things in a certain way. And that's what we'll be looking at. Now, the easiest way to understand perceptual organization, I find, is, is through these Jessalt principles of perception, which are essentially rules on how to interpret information. Um, and these principles were developed by psychologists in the field of Jessalt psychology. So this is a field of psychology based on the idea that the whole is different from the sum of its parts. So what this means is, you know, you can't just look at the parts of something to understand it, at least from this within this field of psychology. Um, you can't just look at the parts of something to understand it, you also need to look at it as a whole because that is going to be different from the sum of its parts. And so Jessalt psychologists suggest that this is what the brain does. They believe that the brain creates a perception that is more than the sum of sensory information and it does so in predictable ways. Um, and they've translated these predictable ways into these principles by which we organize sensory information. Um, and so we're going to be looking at each of these, starting with uh, the figure ground um, relationship. So this is the idea that we tend to segment our visual world into figure and ground. The figure is the focus of the visual field, so wherever we're focusing our vision. And then the ground is the background. So our perception can vary depending on what we view as figure and what we view as ground. Um, and this explains why this image can be perceived as either a vase or a pair of faces. So if you view the white part here as the figure and the black part as the ground, then you are going to see a vase. If, however, you see the white part as the ground and the black part as the figure, then you are going to see two faces looking at each other. In, in real life, um, we usually see things with a definite shape or form as the figure, and then the ground is usually something shapeless. Um, so, for example, when you look at the sky, the clouds, which have a definite shape, are the figure, and then the sky is the ground. Um, or if you look at people in the street, the people are the figure, and then the street behind them is the background, or the ground. So here is another example um, demonstrating this. I'm actually... I would normally turn the lights off at this point. I'm going to see if it helps by turning down the light on my screen. I don't know whether this will work. We will see. Um, so with the with the light dimmer, you should mostly be focusing on the white part. Um, and if you are, if that's if that's the figure, and the black parts around it or the darker parts around it are the ground, then you should be seeing the animals. If I turn it back up so that you can see the people. If you focus on the parts around the edge and the white is the ground, um, then you will most likely see the people. So what you see depends on basically where you focus your, your vision, what parts the figure and what parts the ground. Um, the next Jessalt principle um, is proximity. So this is the idea that things that are close to one another tend to be grouped together. So this principle of, of proximity would suggest that you should see this as one block of dots and then this as three columns of dots because based on this principle we group these together these together and these together, the parts that are close to each other, the, the parts that are close in proximity get grouped together. 
We then have the principle of closure, um, which is basically the idea that our brain will fill in the gaps. It's the idea that we organize our perceptions into complete objects rather than as a series of these individual parts. So it would suggest that we will perceive a complete circle here um, and a rectangle here rather than a series of these little segments. Obviously, you still see the gaps there. The point is that despite those gaps, you will still view that as a circle and a rectangle rather than just random lines. Um, a real life example would be the Apple sing symbol, the Mac symbol. Um, if you look at it, there's actually that, that little chunk missing from the apple, and yet you still look at that and see it as a whole apple, despite the fact that there's a part missing. Um, and then the next just thought principle is uh, continuity. So this is the idea that we are more likely to perceive continuous smooth flowing lines rather than jagged broken lines. Um, so good continuation would suggest that we are more likely to perceive this as two overlapping lines uh, rather than four lines meeting in the center. And then the principle of similarity is the idea that things that are alike tend to be grouped together. So when looking at these dots we are uh, likely to perceive alternating rows of color rather than just random individual lines. We'll, we'll see them as blue lines grouped together and yellow lines alternating. Uh, and the last thing I'll leave you with, as I usually ask, you know, to raise your hands if you see a duck or a rabbit, again, it really is going to depend on where you focus your attention um, and how you organize this. Um, so to help you see the, it both ways, to see the duck, this is the beak. This is, oh, this is the duck's eye, this is the back of the head. For the rabbit, you need to flip it around. This is the rabbit's mouth, this is the rabbit's eye, and then this is the rabbit's ears pulled back. 